good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Utica TV Overtime. I'm Jermaine Trotter. And my name's Corinne Bush. We are so excited to be bringing you up to date on Utica Athletics. All righty, and let's get straight to it. Going into last Wednesday, game against Morrisville, our women's lacrosse team was undefeated with a 3-0 record. The Pioneers' offense started the game very fast, but put pressure on the Mustang defense for the entire first half. All region midfielder Sydney Skacia started it with, up with a goal on an early man up chance, and that opened the floodgates for Utica. While the Pioneers defense kept Morrisville in check, the Pioneers playmakers did their job. Addison Green scored back to back goals, followed by Samantha DeCondo scoring three straight, and Alyssa Drell finding the back of the net two times. A few more goals, and the score was 10 0 at halftime. The Pioneer's second half was about controlling the lead. They split 4-4 four to four in the half to, first, to finish the game with a 14-4 win. It was their second straight double-digit win. The undefeated women's lacrosse team took on RPR this past Saturday, looking to excel to 5-0 on the season. The Pioneers started off slow, going down three goals in the first quarter. After the slow start, they rallied in the second with goals from senior attack Emily Rossi and junior attack Samantha DeCondo. Graduate student attack Ashley Guerra had a great showing finding the back of the net once to go along with the two assists. Sadly, the effort wasn't enough for the ladies as they fell short to the engineers 14-9. The Pioneers look to get back into the win column next week versus SUNY Canton. While the Utica football team has been off the field, they have still managed to keep busy during their offseason. Utica TV's Thomas Caputo reports on what the team has been up to recently and how they have been helping to make a difference. The Utica football team and the university's programming board joined forces for a great cause. Last week, Utica University, as well as 160 sports teams from schools around the country, held events to find potential blood, stem cell, and marrow donors. The Strubble Lounge was packed with students who came down to see if they were a match with a painless cheek swab and students who participated in testing were also able to stuff their own stuffed animals. Today's event, you know, we've been spreading the word about Be The Match and it's about saving a life. We told our guys in the meeting, saving a life is one of the biggest things you can do in the life. It's the most unselfish thing you can do is to put, your, put yourself out there to help someone else. You know, being healthy, especially being young football players and college level athletes and students, we can save a lot of lives just with our bone marrow if we get picked. Reporting for Utica TV, I'm Thomas Caputo. Thanks, Thomas. This week, Ethan Tremblay met with women's lacrosse team members, Kelsey Trainer, and Deanna Rosado to see what advice they would give to new team members. Ethan? Now tell us a few things about yourselves. What year were you two? We're both seniors. Both seniors, okay. Yeah. Makes sense, because I said that in the intro. <laughs> um, well, what do you both study? I'm occupational therapy. OT? Business management. Business management, nice. And uh, where you come? Are you from the area local? I'm from Utica, yeah. You're from Utica? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like three hours downstate, like about an hour from the city. Oh, OK. Yeah. Somewhat local, I guess. If you kind wanted of. to go home, you could. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, what position do you guys play? Both defense. defense. Both play defense, OK. So as of right now, you guys are a four and one record, which is pretty good. Yeah. And um, a four game, uh, technically a three game win streak because yeah, there was two cancellation games yeah. and there was one postponed and canceled. So how do you keep that level of play up? Um, I feel like we definitely struggled in the beginning because we had such a long preseason, I feel like. Right. Um, so by the time we got to get onto the field, we were so excited to play that I think that we were all just really happy to be there. Um, and I definitely think the record like we always want, we want to win. Like even that last game, like even though it was tough, like we played really good, but like even having that one loss, I'm like, no, we better destroy Canton. <laughs> so there, there was a pretty big gap between the last game and the game you have tomorrow, correct? Um, not too bad. Not too but bad, but bigger last, than the... Yeah, the typical game. How do you keep that kind of intensity and not getting too lazy because you haven't played in a while? I feel like Not the just, rust off. Sort yeah, of it. it's kind of just like the energy we bring at practice. So like trying to keep everyone having positive vibes and like at least having a little bit of fun. She's always having fun at practice <laughs> and laughing. That definitely makes it go by fast. Yeah. <laughs> so what drew you to play lacrosse here at UC? What drew you to play lacrosse? Yeah. Kelsey. <laughs> okay. We started playing in January and then she convinced me to try. Because you just started, right, yes. this season? 
Yep. All for Kelsey? All for Kelsey. Wow. Yeah. Must have very much influence over her. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? What do you hear about? Um, I was looking at a bunch of colleges for nursing originally. Okay. So it was more about the major. And then my friend, who's actually the assistant coach, Haley Vandermeulen, um, she played here while I was coming to look here. And she obviously had a huge influence over that because like, I saw how much fun she was having and how happy she was. And I was like, wow, this seems really fun. So. <laughs> Now, what age were you when you started playing uh, lacrosse? I was a freshman in high school, so maybe 15. Oh, okay. Yeah. Obviously, we know. <laughs> <laughs> now, for both of you guys, is there a particular game that stands out either in your high school career or your very short <laughs> college career that's just going to stand out for you for a while? I would say, of course, the first game we ever got into, which was really exciting because I never played lacrosse before. Okay. Yeah, she did really well. <laughs> um, and I would say my freshman year, we played Stevens, and they're a really good team, and I want to say we've never beaten them before, or we went like a really long time without beating them. Right. And I think we won that game like 14 to 7, and it was just really exciting. Ooh, I bet yeah, that was I remember pretty that. Exciting. Everyone was like so relieved. They were like, I can't believe we just did that. Now, being a student athlete, I'm sure that takes up a lot of the time. How do you balance the, the cross side and obviously the class load size? Because well, you guys are both taking very hard majors. Yes, I'm only taking my concentration classes, so I only have three marketing classes, so I really have a lot of time to do all my work before practice. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am taking <laughs> yeah. like 10 classes. Right. Um, so it's definitely not easy and it's exhausting actually all the time. Um, but I think I just like really value getting out of class and being able to have practice to get my mind off of it. So I feel like it's just like- A bit of a break almost. Yeah, just looking at it as a positive aspect, which makes it a little less exhausting. You just, just lose a little sleep in it, yeah. that's all. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> not that important sleep. anyway. Yeah. <laughs> now what's your uh, favorite part of lacrosse? Either total or just at UC? We're at Utica University. Um, probably pregame practices because we only have to run a half lap. <laughs> Which she <laughs> they, were, they get so excited over just running half the field. Yeah. And that, it is exciting. That, that's your favorite part. Yeah. About yeah. The whole Literally, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you were to ask any of the girls, like the most exciting part about pregame practice is because we have to run a half lap. I feel like I'm learning something new every day, so like everything is my favorite part right exactly, now. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So like I like even like during our first game, like I didn't even know like how subbing works, <laughs> and so like I was like <laughs> figuring it out as I went. For me, when I watch on the sidelines, it's still confusing. Yeah. So I guess you guys <laughs> yeah. know. Yeah. Now, what do you think is the hardest part about lacrosse? Is a good question for you since you just started. <laughs> yeah, you could start with that. Well, like besides the subbing, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, like switching hands, it definitely is going to take a very long time to get used to. Okay. But I would say that's the hardest part. I don't even know what that even is. You switch hands during <laughs> like, lacrosse? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, you have fair. to be able to use both hands for lacrosse. Oh, so it's not more like a one dominant type sport. Oh, okay. See, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. How are you, Kelsey? Um, I would say probably transition from like high school to college lacrosse because like the most of the people yes. that play in high school are like the big fish in their pond. And then when you come to college, like you all contribute. Like I wouldn't say there's one star of the show where it's like, right. oh my gosh, if we don't have them, we'll die. Like. I think that we all play a part in it, and sometimes I feel like that adjustment's a lot to Could be. handle for students yeah. because even when like freshmen come in, they're like, "Wow, like everyone contributes part to this team, team is yeah. a part of this team," and like you're just not used to that all the time. Now, does say if you lose a game or you have a rough practice, how does that affect like your classroom life? Or so you have a test the next day, do you have to set up that barrier, or how does that work? Um, it's got to be hard. I was going to say, honestly, like, like, like I definitely get frustrated with losses. Like, yeah. even after Saturday, like, like obviously, like, congrats to the other team, whatever. But, like, throughout well, the day, I'll, it's be, fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's I'll fine. like, be cooking dinner. And I'm like, oh, like, I can't believe that play happened or this right. happened. But, We've planned it back yes, in your head. like, over and over again. But when it comes to school, like, school's obviously the most important thing. So, like, I have Student to. Student before the yeah, athlete. Yeah, I have so. to make that barrier. And, like, if I want to be an OT, I have to pass. So you definitely have to pass. I have pass to definitely put too. that first. Same thing for you? Yeah. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so what age is the team? Mostly seniors, freshmen, or is it a good mix? I feel like it's a good mix. We have a lot of sophomores that play, Okay, right? well, that's probably good then, because you'll be still vet, you know, older team, but still yeah, decent. Yeah, definitely. We have one grad student that she came back from last year, said she's the other captain. Okay. Um, but I would say we have definitely a lot of sophomores. We have hardly any freshmen. We have two freshmen. Yeah. Ooh, so. I don't know about that. Yeah. Right? The freshman class coming in. Yeah. Oh, for the next good. season, yeah. I guess, mm -hmm. for the 2023? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They look pretty big. Now, you're obviously, you're not going to be here for them, but if you could be here for them, what would be your, if you had three kind of words of wisdom, three tips of advice, what would that be? You got anything? <laughs> um, during the recovery. Or what, what did she tell you when you joined the team then? How's that? Uh, that's a good 
Lindsay's family. She's basically just have fun. Like all of the girls, like like lean on the team. Like everyone helps me. Like even both coaches, they like they're constantly like correcting me and like telling me what I can do better. I'm like, sure definitely. there's plenty of that going on. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like every day, but like yeah, just like lean on your teammates. It's pretty good advice. I know. I'm good what like is your that. favorite? <laughs> what is your favorite part about uh, Utica sports? What was your favorite part about your team? My favorite part about my team is that we all like really know how to have fun together. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like sometimes that can even be like a problem because like we're all just it like laughing. Be. But like yeah. I literally love spending time with them regardless if it's in the locker room or outside of practice. Like I or if we were to all hang out outside of school, like I constantly want to spend time with them because we just have a lot of fun. Tight knit, almost like a family. A family. Yeah. Took the words right out of my yeah. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, good luck against your uh, SUNY Canton this week. And this will be the final game in your home sh period, or I guess whatever you call that. <laughs> um, hopefully, you can repeat what you did last year to them because it was a bit of a blowout. Like 23 it. to 3, or 21 to 3. Yes, I agree. Well, hopefully, that, that is the same thing that happens mate, tomorrow. Maybe yeah. get some PT. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll be there cheering you both on. Hopefully, I get to see you play. <laughs> Uh, thank you both for coming out to today's show. Yeah, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. And always remember to fear the moose. <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. Let's take a look at the sports coming up for next week. This Wednesday, the Kangaroos of SUNY Canton will come to town to face the women's lacrosse team. Senior Emily Rossi and the team look to get back into the win column as they suffered a tough loss versus RPI in the last showing. The game will be held at Gatano Stadium at 4 o'clock. Utica University's women's softball team will face off in a doubleheader this upcoming Friday here at Greenman Softball Field. The Pioneers will play a good Empire 8 opponent in Hunton College. The softball team looks to advance their record of 4-8 to 6-8 by securing two wins in the doubleheader. The Pioneers await their first win since stacking college. So make sure to support our Pioneers this Friday with lots of noise. The baseball team long-awaited home opener will be held this Saturday in a doubleheader against Sage College. The games will be held at 1 and 4 p.m. as the team opens up Empire 8 conference play. The team has had a good start to the season as they've dealt with a tough road schedule that included trips to New Jersey and Florida and has had a 6-4 record to show for it. Sage enter enters the series with a record of 3-13. With two games at home before a doubleheader at their place on Sunday, the Pioneers have a good chance to open up conference play hot. Men's tennis is another team here at Utica opening up Empire 8 play this weekend. St. John Fisher Tennis will be making the trip down to face off against the 1-0 Pioneers. The matches will start at 1 p.m. Last week, the men's team started 1-0 with a commanding win against Madeline, Co Madeline College. Good luck to all competitive teams in the matches this weekend. Next Tuesday, April 5th, Utica University will be talking, taking on Casanova College at the baseball field. The game is scheduled to start at 4 p.m. In the last game against Cavs, Utica scored two runs to the Wildcats three. This game will be the redemption round for Utica. Between the Moose and the Wildcats, who do you think will win? And that's all the Utica sports we have for you this week. Thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with everything going on in Utica athletics. And check out our Instagram for even more sports content from the Moose Minute series to live score updates on our story. Don't forget to... Fear the Moose! moose.